Cool. Yeah. Uh, welcome back to my channel, guys. It's Dave here, and I'm joined with Galen Stapley, my very incredibly talented guitar player friend. Hey there. Um, do you want to introduce yourself to everybody? Yeah, I'm yeah. Galen. Um, I play guitar. I play guitar in a prog band called Azure. And yeah, Dave invited me to, over to his house because we were going to put together some lessons. But then we just sort of got really hyped on talking about guitar stuff. And we thought this might be slightly more interesting than lessons. Yeah, we, we just decided to record what we were, uh, we were just generally talking about. So yeah. uh, let's start off with this, this cool pinch harmonic sweeping thing yeah. that you're doing. So, so this is a thing that is fun and dumb and I love it. <laughs> And basically, um, I found that you could get harmo like pinch harmonics on upstrokes as well if you just get the right amount of thumb flash in there. Beautiful sound. Yeah, <laughs> but what that means is you can just hit alternate pick to pinch harmonic stuff, and you can sweep pick pinch harmonic stuff, and that just means you just have access to just so much more neck. And I learned it because I, you know, um, Final Fantasy. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, you know there's... Uh, the, the prelude yeah. at the start, yeah, yeah. like, that's like four octaves of arpeggio, and I was yeah. like, oh, but I don't have four octaves of range. And like, I've seen people do it on eight string and stuff before, but then they're starting off in this other register where it's like, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah, which is sure. cool. Um, and like, I've seen people do it with whammy pedals, but I'm like a complete gear novice. Like, I sure. just have my guitar and I play it, but I was yeah. like, what if I used pinch harmonics? <laughs> so I just got... Um, yeah. Really yeah. accurate at doing that. <clears throat> um, your head stops a bit in the way oh, of what's going go. on. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So we can... We can just hit pinch harmonics everywhere mm -hmm. with that. And like the trick is... Having the pick with a bit of thumb flesh, this side and this side, and then having the thumb go diagonally across the strings like that. And that way, when you're coming back for an upstroke, you can get that upstroke. And like, this is just a completely, like, pointless extra fun <laughs> guitar thing, but yeah. like, I don't know. I mean, I, th I feel like there's a, a whole new world of possibilities that have opened up to me from uh, just thinking about doing this. So Yeah, uh, you can play like... gigs for, like, dogs. <laughs> like, you know? I mean... <laughs> They'll love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, like... That's dumb. Yeah. You never Ooh. know when you might need that, though. So, yeah, you uh, don't know. Yeah. I mean, a lot of my solos, like, I like to end up, end off on, like, one of these. Like, sure. if, if I've already, like... <laughs> Exhausted all that range, I'm like, well, what about <coughs> up there? Yeah, because then you got all that. Um, so yeah, that's just a fun thing, and obviously you can hit other harmonics, but like after the octave, it starts to sound a bit piercing. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah like that. Sure. Um, so that's a fun thing. Yeah. That awesome. I've been doing. I mean, I've seen Zach Wilde do it before on Stillborn. Um, he did that, but he, he wasn't necessarily doing like, um, it wasn't like accurate harmonics. He was just taking that like, um, alternate pitch harmonic thing and yeah. just doing it across the string and doing it that. Yeah. That thing. And I thought, knowing that that was possible, I was like, ah, oh, I can just make it accurate. And like seeing Eric Johnson do it with all that and seeing who's, who's the other guy who does all that stuff. Uh, Tommy Emmanuel. Yeah, like all the... Oh, yes, all that. Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> I can't really do it properly, but that stuff. Sure. So there's a lot of possibilities with harmonics. And there's also that guy at the moment, Rupam Garg, who's doing this thing. Where he's, he's taking his first finger and he's like... He's sweeping up and down like that. Yes. Have you seen him? Um, I know there's that band, The Surrealist. Yeah, that's Is Rupin. that him? That's yeah, him. okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, he's, he's amazing. Like, yeah, man. I've yeah. only just seen that recently. Yeah. But yeah, so there's just a lot of things you can do. There's, sure. there's so many things. Yeah, man. Um, I'm finding new ones like, every, you know, yeah, all the time. All the time, yeah. I mean, at least it's new to me. Sure, sure. Like, uh, why don't you tell me about like, like some of the bends? Cause like oh, you were, bends, yeah. yeah, you were you were talking to me about bends earlier, yeah, and you were just showing me all these new different ways of bending that I've like kind of not like 
thought about before. Yeah, so um, which, which so ones do you want to start There was the, the hook one. Uh, oh, the, the Jerry Donahue thing. Yeah. yeah. So that's not necessarily new, but like... It, no, but it, it was, was new to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what, what you want to do is you just... You take that G string and... You bend it all the way so you're touching the B string. And then you catch the B string underneath and you bend them both back. And it just makes... You can just emulate lap steel sort of licks like that's a bit out, but you get the gist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah, there's just so many cool things you can do with that. Like one that I really like is so you know those standard those ones. Yeah. If you catch the one below, if you catch that G string, you can get this. It's minor triad, this little um Is that that's yeah. second, I tell you what, why don't we version. why don't we move the camera a bit closer to you? Yeah, yeah, let's do uh, that. And then we'll uh Alright, so you're just doing one of those standard um minor third bends with the pinky underneath. But then if you catch the G string underneath, you get this little um what is that? F sharp minor triad. Yeah, I just thought that was really cool to have and like you can combine that with the harmonics as well and you can go like Oh no, that was horrible. Let's do that again <laughs> You can do all sorts of- let's do it down here Let's just cut that whole thing. No, that's, no, that's good man. I, if, I can... if I do it right Perfect, That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> So yeah, stuff like that's cool to do. I haven't, because I don't really play much country, I haven't had much use for it. But sure. I have taken um, the like crux of the technique and used it for more useful stuff. I was in this rock band for a while, um, and we had this one song, and like all, all the stuff was like multi-tracked with so many guitars, but we didn't play sure. anything on backing track live, so we just had to fill out everything we could. Yeah. Um, so like everyone was singing backing vocals. Everyone. It was. It was just this huge production. It was ridiculous. Sure. Um, but there was this one part with this harmony guitar, while there was some important riff going on, and I didn't want to lose the harmony guitar, and I, I kept having the harmony get lost in the mix when I used a harmony pedal, because it like really compressed the signal, and I have, again I've got no idea what I'm doing <laughs> here. So I was like. Let's just fix it with technique. Sure. Um, so I just took that same like approach of having a double bend like that, but I just applied it to two string. So yeah, um, it was just this this line, but like I wanted to get the the sound of the two the two parts going in, so I just went and that we had that yeah. just on one guitar, and I just thought that was cool. And Sweet. It came across all right live. Yeah, yeah. Because it just cut, because it was just the tone I was using that was cutting anyway. Sure, sure. I didn't have to do any tap dancing in the middle of the set either, which yeah. was nice. Yeah, sure. So like, everything I can fix with just technique, I can, because I, I just suck at pedals. Sure, I yeah. Suck I kind of suck at pedals too. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is another thing that I've been messing around with recently. Okay. It's, um... <laughs> muted breaks. Okay. Sure. So it's like... Nice. So, Sick. Yeah. So how, how are you doing that? Is it kind of just like... Um, like that? Uh... Yeah, you, you, you've got exactly what it is. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. Cool. Um, I'm just starting on this D. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, it's exactly that shape. So you've just got the um, the five and nine, yeah. And then I'm just doubling the nine with that bar thing. Yeah, I noticed that. So you've basically got three in a row. Yeah. And then what I'm doing is I'm just muting, Four in a row. muting real hard down at the bridge. Oh, sure. I'm just doing this really consistent sweep. And like, it's not too it's not too hard a thing to get fast because you don't actually have to really move your fingers about. Sure. And you don't have to synchronize anything up, but what you do have to do is you have to do that. Just you have to get that in time. Get that in time, yeah. And that's what I found is doing like less 
precise motions with that, just using the whole arm, just going up and down like that. Oh, let's give that a go. Yeah. Um, I, I, I do a bit of adjustment with the fingers when, okay. once, once I reach the top. Okay. But only the slightest bit. Sure. Okay, I'll give that a go. Yeah, try that. And it's also like really making sure that I've got this going right across the bridge. Sure. So I'm not I'm not completely muting that top one, top one. So I have to kind of angle my hand so it's like parallel to the bridge. So I'm I'm getting the same mute on. Uh, all of okay. It makes a lot of sense there. Uh, yeah, and you can do it on a clean tone like you are. But yeah, the great thing about that technique that. I really like about it is you can just do it on any sound. Sure. Like you can put flanges on it and it goes when it's like nice. <laughs> nice. Like that. You can put anything on it and it sounds all right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a fun one. Yeah. I love that. I haven't written. That's the only riff I've got with it. My friend Barney's sure. written a riff with it for his new track that's not out yet. Okay. But it's it's really good. Yeah, yeah. And he he does all these these big chords where he's like leaping across strings. Um, um, I think. So that I think he's got that chord in it, and instead of like leaping it, instead of like missing out that G string, like that, that's what he was doing initially, but like, what he does instead is he goes and just sweeps right through it. Right through it, okay. Yeah, and that, like, that's a thing that I've, I've nicked from Pliny. Okay, that, yeah. Because like, we, we were just talking about that part, um, and he showed me it, and I was like, oh, you, you try it like this. Yeah. And he's like, oh yeah, that's much easier. But yeah, like, he made that from Pliny from Handmade Cities. Um, okay. You know, I'm just trying to think where it is in the song. Okay. Yeah. Those. Sick. Now, those are great because those are literally just an octave, a dead note, an octave, a dead note, and an octave. That's crazy, yeah. And, and it's sat, like, when I heard it on the record, I was like, what is happening? Yeah. What is he doing? Like, he, he's not muting it, though. Oh, he's not. Yeah, that's. Yeah, but he, he is changing fingers. So how? So it's like this. Okay, yeah, yeah, so he's not sustaining the notes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Really so cool. that, that was something that I thought was really cool. Yeah, yeah. I haven't figured out something to do with that yet. Sure. But you can put the harmonics on it. <laughs> you can put the you harmonics can... and everything. I've that's learned what's that from great you. about it. Like... <laughs> that's a horrible sound, but I love it. <laughs> it's just... I, I can see that working in a lot of contexts. Yeah, yeah, the thing about the harmonic thing is live, you've really got to watch out for your tone. Because if, too... if you've got that like really, that pop in, that pop in kind of drivey, chunky rhythm tone. Yeah. It just sounds awful. Oh, no, really? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you, you get less of the note and you get more of the, the okay. of the string. You get sure. more of that. So you got to be really careful with it. Yeah. But if you've got like a nice smooth sound, you can get away with just like making all this high frequency stuff go down. Oh, awesome. awesome. Or you could just get a Digitech whammy. So yeah, here's another great thing. Okay. That kind of Nick from Tom Fountainhead who does all that stuff. Have okay. you seen that guy? Um, I don't think so. Actually. Oh, he's from yeah. Amog Symphony. He used okay. to be an obscure, but they kicked him out. But okay. we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's... sounds like it's gonna go into like some fat melodic dubstep beat. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But what's happening there is just this is already here. Okay. And you're just activating harmonics by just hammering on from nowhere. Sure. So. Yeah, so I, I'm at the 11th fret right now. Yeah. Um, but you can move it around, which is the great sure. thing. Yeah, and you can just try all different shapes, and you can get all sorts of weird melodies out of it. Yeah. How are you getting that much attack? Uh, just, well, one of it's the thing is with the micro cube, there's a lot of, um, oh, you want to go on the bridge. Oh, bridge. Go on the bridge okay. pickup. That'll cool. help, because you get more travel. Um, the micro cube's reverb is really like trebly as sure. well, um, and also you might want to get some gain on there. If there's not, there isn't any gain on there really. It's all yeah, you get some gain. Let's give that a go. But yeah, it's got like a really trebly reverb, so like that stuff like sticks out. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm at the fourth fret. And I'm just doing these um, minor shapes with my fingers. Yeah, the one. 
fourth and eleventh fret. But if you take that shape, you can, and you can move where this finger is and just experiment with different uh, shapes. Oh, let me just turn that. There's just so much stupid stuff you can do with it. Yeah. <laughs> like that. And because you can move those shapes around, you can just get all sorts of things and you can do it in loads of different keys. Yeah. Because um, then you're not stuck to just like the... Those guys. That's really cool. Oh man. So that's... A whole new world of yeah tiny noises to explore. <laughs> that's really cool. Um, yeah, that's my favorite riff I've come up with so yeah. far. It's just just that. yeah, I love that's that. really cool. It's just such a nice little melody. And like as utilizing these sort of techniques because they have their like limitations and specific things they can do and like specific areas of the guitar they occupy, sometimes they can help you come up with a riff. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, you know, usually you should try and come up with what's in your head to make a riff, but sometimes the technique can help, like, write the riff for you. Sure. You can, you know, and that's... that's. Do you have any examples of that? Well, I mean, that was an example. That was well, an I've example, got more yeah. examples, like, um... Give me a sec, what, what have I... What have, <laughs> what's going on? Well, I mean, like, anything with open strings. Sure. Um, and so I've got this one riff in one of my songs that goes... Oh. I'll take some of that reverb yeah, away. Yeah, some reverb might yeah. to, to go away there. Uh, yeah, so it's like... But that... That, like, sometimes just the open strings will tell you what to do. Sure. Because if, if I've got like an A. So that's an, that's an example of that. Yeah, is, yeah. It's having open strings. So sometimes you were saying to me that um, you can create a whole new technique just because, like, the part of a song that you're playing needs it. Yeah, well, so, it wouldn't be like a new technique. Yeah. It'd be more like. Just combining Combine. some stuff okay, that you need, cool. you know. Yeah. Um, so sometimes I'll be working with Chris from Azure, and he'll just send me sheet music. Cause he writes a lot of the stuff just on Sibelius. Yeah. And then he'll just send me sheet music, and he'll be like, "Play this." <laughs> <laughs> and some some of it's just like just this mad MIDI stuff that just shouldn't be. Yeah. Like it's not for guitar. It's not for any instrument. And you just have to come up with a way to play it. And like, there's one in a new song, just like this part won't make any sense out of, out of, out of the context yeah, of sure. the song. But like, these these were the notes. The notes were. Those were the notes. And like, I had to just come up with a way to play it. And that was obvious. That's the way. I... That's the way I came up to play it. Sure. Um, and yeah, and sometimes it'll just be something that's not, just not in your current ability to play and you'll just have to find like workarounds for it. Yeah. So we've got a song at the moment out called Red Tail. And the main riff um, is it's this chugging, this chugging 7-8 kind of thing. Yeah. But then it just goes into this run that is, it's just like a pentatonic run but with like a bit of like diatonic stuff going on. Sure. Like that. And when I first recorded in that run, I was practicing for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. Because there's like three iterations at the, at, of that run, and it's at 190 beats per minute sixteenths. Yeah. Which is like pretty fast that for that kind fast. of stuff. Yeah. Um, so at first I thought, okay, let's do the... But I didn't like that, because there's all these different string presses. And I got that up to quite a clip, but I couldn't get it like consistently up to like 190, and I was like, oh, I hate that. Yeah. So then I thought I'd just do this with just two notes per string. Like that. Okay. And that was doable, but it was only doable every now and then. Sure. Because like, you, there's things you can do for recording, and then like, you have to do that live, and every time it's coming up, you, you just can't have a good time live. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, I, again, I'm like, 
heroically out of practice for that stuff, but I, I got that up to about 190, and that's what's on the record, is just this... This, this thing. Nah, I can't play it right Sure. Now. Okay. okay. Yeah, so what I did instead is... Um, yeah, it looks it. so much smoother. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It sounds better as well. Yeah. I wish I recorded it like that. Um, but I came came up with that after we put Hopefully, the record yeah, out. Yeah. And we were like, oh, we're going to have to play this, aren't we? Sure. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but there's always a way to play it. There's always... There's all, if, you, if you just like get really creative with all the techniques that you know, there's yeah. just always a way around it. Um, but yeah, so that's just like hybrid. <laughs> Just a combination of hybrid picking and legato. Yeah. Ah. That's the one. Yeah, sick. Yeah. You're gonna have to send me that. I, I wanna yeah, that. Yeah, I will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> please do. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, cool. So I think we'll wrap it up there. Yeah. Um, all right. That was awesome. Do you want to plug your, your stuff once again? Yeah, I'll, all right. I'll, I'll put so links in the description. My band's called but... Azure, and we play music that involves all these crazy noises, but it's less self-indulgent than you'd think. They're basically <laughs> pop songs. Yep, if you yep. can call a 20-minute song <laughs> about Pokemon with those shredding licks in it a pop song, you'll get what I mean if you listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, cool. Um, we'll be back for more videos in the near future, so uh, I'll see you in the next one.